Welcome to the Laser Channel. Today's step-by-step -step project will be making this simple cutout with a picture that you find off the internet. And don't worry, I'll show you a great resource where to find free images to use for all of your projects. This particular project is being made out of a piece of plywood that we get at the Dollar Tree. Stay tuned and find out how to make this exciting project. Welcome back and thank you for joining me today. Uh, before we get started, full disclosure, I am not paid, sponsored, or reimbursed by Xtool or any of the websites or stores mentioned in the making of this video. Before we get started using any of the tools here, including the laser, we want to think about safety. So a quick word about using the goggles and having a fire extinguisher or something to put out a fire should that happen to come up, but hopefully it won't but it's always good to be prepared. In this project, we're going to be making a cutout uh, around a picture that we select off of a website. So the materials needed for today's project is some wood. I picked up this piece from the Dollar Tree. It's fairly consistent. Dollar Trees are fairly accessible for most people. And again, there it's like $1.25 for this. Uh, quick tip. These stickers that are on the back, if you take a warm blow dryer and just kind of heat that sticker up, that'll peel right off in one piece. Once we place this board in the tool area, we'll need something to hold it in place so that as the machine is running, that this board does not move around. So for that, uh, I like to use either painter's tape or I've cut out some of these uh, T tie downs for the work. Or in other cases, uh, I'm using the X-Tool Honeycomb, which is magnetic, so I picked these up off of Amazon. They're magnetic strips about six inches long, about one inch wide. I usually double stack them and I kind of use them to fence the work in, if you will. So with all of that out of the way, let's jump into the computer and let's get started. Here we are in the computer and we're going to look on the internet for our picture. So we're going to look for a website called Pixa Bay. And we'll go ahead and jump into that. This pops up, this is what the website looks like. And for my project, I wanna do something with a, a dog theme. So I'm going to enter that in. And in just a minute here, we're going to get all of these images of all these dogs. Uh, for today's example, what we want to look for is an image that's purely black and white. So up here under images, we're going to select illustrations, and this will be the best way to find that. So what we're going to be looking for are illustrations that are just purely black and white again. So any of these that I'm hovering my mouse over would work great. I'm going to scroll down a little bit further here and find, here's a paw. I click on that one. And this image has a checkerboard behind it, which is what I want. That means that it'll have a transparent background. So we'll have just the black paw, which is what we're looking for. We'll click on free download. And I want a PNG file and I'll Confirm download. I'm already logged in. If you've never logged into this website before, it'll just ask for login credentials on that. I found I've never had problem with spam email from Pixabay uh, filling up my mailbox and stuff. So it's one of those safer sites to uh, download photos for your projects. If you're doing projects that you wish to sell, make sure that you check out the Pixabay license and see that you're adhering to their rules and regulations to make sure that you're not violating any of that. I've already read this before and this is free for commercial use, so it's free for me to use in this video. So we're done with this. We're going to close out uh, the window. Here we are in LaserBox Basic. Uh, first thing that I'd like to do is click on Menu. We're going to Import. It'll think about it for a minute. And here it is, and it fills up the entire screen, and it's 396 millimeters squared, which is pretty large. And I want to actually shrink that down to about 50 millimeters. So I can either do that over in this area, or 
I can click on the paw and make that larger or smaller. But here I specifically want a dimension, so I'm just going to type that in. And using the middle mouse wheel, I can scroll in and out of the image. And if I press and hold space bar, I can move the image around on the screen and get it more centered up. So again, this material that we have is from the Dollar Tree, and I took a measurement on that before, and that was some, uh, I don't know if it's basswood, but it's close enough to that. So we'll try that, these settings for engraving. Now, the next thing that I like to do is uh, draw a circle around that. So I can start drawing this and I can make this really any shape that I would like. If I press and hold shift, it will constrain it to a perfect circle. And we can see that it's a little bit off center. The paw is a little bit closer to the left side than it is to the right. I can grab the center of the circle and as I move it around, we'll see these blue lines appear. And when I have a perfect vertical and horizontal lines, I know that I'm perfectly centered. Come up here to cut and material, we'll say basswood. And I'm going to actually slow this down just a little bit. Here's laser box on Comport 4. And let's go ahead and get our workpiece attached down in our laser. I've removed the sticker off of the back and I'll also want to remove this piece of twine from the top. And if I have something that I'm making that I want to go ahead and hang, I don't throw the string away because I recycle that back into another project at some time. So place this piece in the work area. I'm going to use my T tie downs for this just because they're quick and they're easy and they're incredibly effective. Next thing, we'll flip the kickstand down and set the focus height of the laser. So it just touches, tighten up that thumb screw, flip the lever back up, and I am going to move the laser back and forth and make sure that I don't feel anything sticking or catching as this moves back and forth. Good. Well, you'll find if you do a lot of paper products, sometimes some little pieces of paper get stuck up on the railings or underneath and you'll feel a little catch and that can throw the laser head out of sync or out of position. So here's the starting point I would like to make for that. And back in laser box, I'm going to go ahead and hit the start button. And it will do some thinking in the background here. I have the laser positioned at 12 o'clock for what I want the start of the project to be. So what that means is there's a little blue dot here. That's where it thinks the laser head is sitting. So we can actually click and hold and drag this around anywhere we want. In our case, I want this at 12 o'clock on the project. And estimated time for this project is eight minutes. I always encourage people, especially when they're starting out, I've been using this laser for quite a while and I still frame every project. What this does is it draws the outline box around the working area that our project will be inside of. And that makes sure that we don't crash into anything and we have material underneath everything where we'd like to make our project. That all looks good. For reference, I'm running the X-Tool 10 watt laser. I do have the air assist on and I do have the orange protective uh, piece off simply because I have this nice enclosure that I use for this. But for today, we'll leave that open. And I'm going to get my goggles on because I have my enclosure open. And let's go ahead and hit start.
And this beginning part of the project, it really is running that fast. This is running real time. Uh, in just a few seconds, I'll speed that up so that we don't have to watch this for the entire duration. It's a little bit like watching paint dry sometimes. And there's some spots here we can see on the left hand side especially, maybe right about there, we can see smoke coming out. That's a good indication that we are cutting all the way through. And here our project is complete. I like to use a small screwdriver or sometimes a razor blade and I use that to kind of pick out my piece of work. And the reason why I like to do that without removing the main board is if this didn't cut all the way through, I can, I can rerun the program again and just do the cutout on it. And that Thank you for watching today's video. I hope that your project came out as well as mine did. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and we'll get that answered for you. Until next time, be safe, be creative, and have fun.